Hello, everyone. Welcome to the LTG Show, episode 206. My name is Sean Wilburn. I'm Tony Hannity's. And we are here to talk about technology and fun information like that. This is the podcast for the website that happens to be called Lazy Tech Guys, LTG. Now, I hope you get it now. So, yeah, we're trying to be clever in here, but, you know, we're doing our best. Now, if you would like to reach us, there's many ways you can reach us. You can email us at comments at lazytechguys.com, or you can give us a call at area code 707-722-5299. We'd love to hear from you, hear comments from you, and uh, comments and talk conversations. Whether you disagree with Tony and agree with me, because it would never happen any other way, you feel free to go ahead and leave a comment and let us know, and we will be just fine. <laughs> anyway, Tony, how are you doing today? I'm good, man. Good. Come yeah. on, man. All right. That's it? All right. Anyway. Oh, so yeah, no, we're... I'm good. Yeah, things are good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to get more out of Tony in a minute because Tony wanted to start a little something new because I'm throwing you on a second. Now, we're actually going to have a little fun just to check up, tell a little bit about who we are. Not really who we are, but more like what we've been doing this week and things just so you can keep updated on what's going on in our who we are. daily lives. I'm five foot six. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I weigh 190. Anyway, Tony, what's been going on with you this week? Yeah, so um, I want to kind of start a new segment in which we kind of go over what we've been uh, consuming uh, technology-wise in the past seven days or so. So, you know, what I've been watching, thanks to the beauty of Reed Hastings and Netflix, I've been really, like, just stuck on, I just finished Breaking Bad. So finally, I just finished all of that. <laughs> and now I'm on the latest season, at least for Netflix, the latest seasons of Bones. And I will say this, going back to Breaking Bad, somebody told me that Jesse dies. And I don't know if you've seen Breaking Bad or not, but spoiler alert, I was, I was like, what? I, I thought... Um, and then also, uh, entertainment-wise, I've been using my phone and tablets a lot for uh, mobile gaming. And I did a review hmm. on um, Spider-Man Unlimited, which is an un uh, endless runner, which is a lot of fun. And I've been playing a lot of FIFA for some odd reason. But it's free, so, you know, can't fault me for that. There you go. Yeah. What about <laughs> you, Sean? Um, I have been going non-tech-wise, not really, well, non-tech-wise, just working on music and all that stuff and trying to improve myself. I actually bought a workbench, a weight bench. Oh, look at you. 100-pound thing, bench press. Yeah, I know. Look at me. Pretty soon I'm going to be looking like a member of full force. If you know who they are, that is really, really saying something. I'm not going to look like that, just so you know. The um, Tech-wise, though, I haven't really been doing much except for playing a lot of video games. Um, Sean Wilburn, funny how this guy seems to have had the same name that I have, who actually comes from the same hometown of Vallejo, California, was drafted into the Arizona, sorry, Arizona, <laughs> the um, Arkansas Razorbacks, and is now in the BCS championship game against the number one Texas Longhorns. Oh, really? <laughs> so and, a lot of people are confusing you, I bet? <laughs> No, I wish uh, that'd be incredible if I was a, a freshman quarterback that leads a team <laughs> that is not ranked up to the championship final game that everyone cares about. So yeah, I've been playing a lot of NCAA 14. Now, this is last year's NCAA game. There is not an NCAA 15 because of a lawsuit and that crap we talked about it last year. So this is last year's game. It's only 30 bucks. It is absolutely worth it. This game is a blast to play. So if you're into football and you don't do Madden, you can check this one out. It's, it's just fun. So. So, but that's it for me. Oh, yeah, and then I last week I finished House of Cards. Binge watched all of it. That was last week. Still remembering and laughing about some of that stuff and remembering how good of a show that was. So House of Cards, Netflix, excellent work. I am actually cannot wait for season three. Me and my girl are both like saying, when season three comes out, we're done. We're on it <laughs> instantly. It's so good. So. You know, Netflix you also finish? has another um, – oh. they have another uh, original show coming out. I forget what it is, but it's also – supposed to be a uh, a drama not not comedy so like okay so they're they're definitely churning a lot out of their their studio i don't know if they actually did it or if they're just backing it but whatever it is it it work. yeah i know right so so if they pay for it let the actors the directors and let the people business people so they get a job the business and the actors have jobs chance to get their names out there and then netflix gets a tv show exclusively so win-win at least for netflix so, yeah, because they, yeah. they brought um, an anime to the United States, which they obviously didn't make, but uh, at least legally, uh, it, uh, you could only watch it through Netflix. And it's not a bad anime. It's, it's good. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. But, uh, it? yeah, I've, you know, it was so good, I forget what the name of it was. 
That's but, how great it is, guys. Remember it. <laughs> that's how great it is, man. You just get I'm lost just in the story, and it doesn't matter what they call it. There's my argument. There and I go. win. <laughs> Either way, I mean, <laughs> very good. Netflix is awesome for binging. Anyway, all right. So besides that, I mean, that's kind of what we've been doing. Um, we, I have a review for this thing that we're going to be having up later on this week. This is the My Passport Pro. This is a Thunderbolt hard drive. See, yeah, I am bringing it up. So this is me putting pressure on myself. I've lagged on doing this review for way too long because out of sight, out of mind. And then um, this is a Thunderbolt hard drive, two terabytes, RAID. This is some serious stuff. I'm putting pressure on myself to get it done this week, telling you in, right, in recording it to the world, to all the people, Bruce, in the world, yes, I'm going to get this done this week. And if you're interested, got some information for you. Awesome. Anyway, so but this is I can't wait to get on this later on, and of course defeat Texas in the Longhorn Texas Longhorns in the BCS championship game. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm tell- I work quick before we get started. We have a lot of topics, so we're going to try to get through them as quick as possible within yeah. reason. Talking about it, but also Tony Apple Pay. So a couple weeks ago or a week ago or whatever that was, Apple announced Apple Pay with right. their iPhone six and iPhone six plus. Right. Now. I have noticed people talking about it. I work retail, so I noticed people talking about it. My question for you is, in the retail that you go to, have you heard anyone really talking about Apple Pay since they announced it? I mean, the the people that work there, yes. Not so much customers. Um, hmm. My job facilitates the the Microsoft tablets, and some of the retails, uh, they have the mobile phone section, uh, mobile phone representatives cover the tablet. So... I've I've talked to them about Android tablets, mm-hmm. Windows tablets, and then obviously the the upcoming iPhones that that are available now, and some of them like uh, some of them that know about NFC are saying for pretty much what I've said like well now that Apple has in a sense um, uh, they've legitimized it by putting it on this latest iPhone because before as you and I both know NFC has been around for many years even before Android was even a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, it wasn't really so much widespread, at least here in the United States. And so, um, f- for that reason, Apple Pay, as of right now, the fact that they launch now is great because I think it's next year. It's going to be a law that a lot of our credit cards are going to be chip based as well too. So that also heightens security. Again, the United States is far behind that. But you know, if you can get to the technology where you don't even have to bring your your card with you, and it's all kind of in your phone, Apple has done a very good job at implementing it. And although Google has the their foot in that pond first, the implementation of Google Wallet or Soft Card is a little clunky. You have to open up your phone. You have to open up the app. You got to type in your PIN twice. It's it just it's possible, but it's a lot to do if you're in line and you're trying to do other things. So um, I'm really happy that Apple has done it uh, because it is going to be in some, it is going to be in limited stores. You know, you have to go to the Disney store to see it. You have to go to Walgreens. It's not going to be in your mom and pop store. Um, Mm -hmm. But the more of these POS companies that make the little NFC um, readers at certain Mm -hmm. uh, retailers start jumping on board, uh, it's also going to push Google. Now the question Mm -hmm. is, um, and people have uh, asked this before, carriers, are they going to be okay with this? Because they were, like Verizon for example, was not okay with ISIS, or rather with Google Wallet. So if you have uh, Verizon and a Google Wallet account, uh, for the longest time you couldn't use the NFC with Google Wallet. Someone told me that now you can, but I don't know if that's completely if that's true or not. Mm-hmm. Um, so that you know, Apple Pay, because Apple has such a strong hold in the market. I mean, they're the first major smartphone to get to the con- consumer, and now there's this. Um, you know, the, the security is much better than the Google Wallet is, and 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 SoftCard. Um, is that going to help push further these other services that you can go to? I don't know. Well, we'll see in the next year or so. Well, definitely, you know, I think it's definitely the branding is, I think, the most, it's as crazy as it, as it is, even over the technology, the branding is the biggest thing. And I guess I had one customer who minds who mentioned it, and with the big thing he said was they heard of it, he talked about it, and the person was also reluctant to do it. So, and the reason why was simply because, well, he was worried that they were going to charge him fees. And I was like, don't worry about it, dude. They're not going to charge the consumer fees. The retailers always pay the fees. It's right. never a problem at all. 
Yeah, yeah. I, you know, when anyway, I worked yeah, at I'm... when I worked at Radio Shack, it was interesting. It was a you know because I had a um, it, you know Radio Shack is your community store, and I had people come in. And they would say, "Why did my phone do that?" They would say, "He stuff. Um, I, do you want to use? Ca- do you want to use uh, debit or credit?" And like, "Oh, well, I, I want to use debit because if I use credit, um, you guys get charged an extra like five percent." Mm-hmm. And I'm standing there like mm-hmm. the rep, and like, I don't care. He's like, "Well, in the long run, it co- kind of comes out of your paycheck." I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. that's kind of one way to look at it. Yeah, use debit. What are you doing? <laughs> so yeah, but no, that's that's very true. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. All right. Anyway, we got topics to talk about. Let's start. Let's uh, first talk about Apple and Beats Music. So apparently they got some um, branding stuff happening and some changes. Uh, wait, actually, I'll answer this question real quick here. Um, I will not be using Apple Pay because this happens to be an Android phone. That's just my question. Yeah, no, same thing for me. If I if I had an, an iPhone, I would totally use it. I mean, when I first got my the first Android phone to support um, ISIS when it was called ISIS at the time because I'm on Verizon Wireless. Um, I was I turned right over to the store, got an ISIS SIM, and went right to Jamba Juice to get my free Jamba Juice for using ISIS. So I mean, I'm I'm all <laughs> on board with that. Um, but yeah, and so yeah, if I had an iPhone or um, if you want to give me an iPhone, yeah, I'll totally use it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm old school. I'm I'm kind of like, eh, I'll worry about it later. Over time, I probably will, will probably have to use it. But as of right now, I got a credit card and a wallet, so I might as well just keep using it. Yeah, that. there's so many times I drive. I don't drive with my with my wallet. And I, yeah, and that's I, you. That's you. I mean, bro, that's just me. me. <laughs> but I'm just saying. I mean, the you know, if we were if we're legally able to digitize everything, I mean, you can have a digital thing of your registration now. So I mean, we're getting to the point where you could do that with your driver's license and other things, well, well, and with well, additional well, security. Well. Oh, we're gonna get there. Don't yeah, don't we'll, just. We'll I mean, it's gonna it's there. gonna we'll, take a long time, but we're gonna get there. So I'm yeah, already on board for the fact that to me, um, having my phone is more important than having my wallet. Because if I ever get pulled over, I'm like, well, sucks. I'll get a ticket, but as long as I can call my wife anytime or whatever, I'm beck and call. That's that's all that matters. So. Mm. All right. What's going on with Apple? And Knock on wood, brand. Don't don't pull me over. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Tony. So Beats Music um, was acquired by Apple you know, earlier this year for about $3 billion, as we know. And for up until now, I mean, it's kind of uh, going along side by side with iTunes Radio and Beats Music. They're kind of both kind of cannibalizing each other. And there were some rumors stating that they were going to fold Beats away. They're going to get kind of get rid of it. Uh, according to Apple, it is not. Um, Tom uh, uh, Neumer, uh, which is Apple's PR rep, he basically said it's not true, which is interesting because you know when it comes to rumors Apple doesn't say anything you know I mean, for the most part they don't mm-hmm. even say anything like we don't comment on rumors I mean, other companies would say Apple just shuts up and they don't they don't say anything but I guess they were very adamant about clearing this up um, according to reports on Rico.net uh, Apple will in a sense get rid of Beats music but the Beats hardware is going mm-hmm. to stay so um, they just recently um, added a new app to Apple TV, which was Beats Music for Apple TV, and it seems okay. as such they're going to kind of continue with the iTunes brand and just kind of gloss over Beats Music and just replace that moniker with with iTunes uh, iTunes Radio, and the interface might be the same. The algorithm for Beats Music is based kind of what they bought. The other thing they, that they bought it for uh, is also going to hmm. stay the same. But yeah, I mean. Sean, you said it earlier, it's all about branding, and Beats Music has a terrible brand. Beats Electronics, though, has a great brand, right? So they're, they're going to yeah. keep the brand that makes sense. And right now, although iTunes Radio just doesn't have the subscribers that they want it to have, maybe folding it in and sp- sprucing it up a little bit is going to help. Um, I don't know if they should ever, ever give away an album that automatically gets downloaded to somebody's iPhone anymore, ever, 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 but... Uh, they definitely learned from that. Thanks, YouTube. Yeah, you don't go away. Free stuff does not work. I don't care what you think. People always think, oh, it's free. They're going to love it. No, no, that does not always work. Just so you know, a little side note. Um, at a job I worked at, we uh, had a bunch of T-shirts. We had no value into them. We wanted to get rid of them, but we weren't going to throw them away. We, we didn't want to goodwill them. We were going to sell them or give them away. So we put a big sign at the front that said, free T-shirts. They sat there for a month, and not a single person took them. I took a thing down. I put a price tag on them that said $1. We sold them in an hour. Interesting. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. 
Psychological. Yeah, psychological. If they offered that YouTube album for a dollar, they probably would have sold way more than if they did if they gave it away for oh, free. No, you, video don't, like, you don't know about the YouTube album? Yeah. You didn't hear about the YouTube album last week? No, no, I know about it. I'm just saying. They so they gave it away for free and pissed off a lot of people. But if they sold that same album for a dollar and said, it's available for a dollar in the iTunes store. Buy it right now. They probably would have done a lot better. Their PR would have been much better. They probably would have got more copies sold. <laughs> and then Apple would have still flipped the same bill because they still pay for it all. Right, yeah. I don't know. I just I think psychologically, if they had did that, it would have been an entirely different situation. People would I don't know. Apple giving things away for free... Ever. We're we're all we're, we get to be cheapskates too, because giving things away for free, then we start feeling entitled. Like, oh, well, how come this app was free last week, and this other app, this is basically the same thing, is four ninety nine. It's like mm. well, there's there's value behind it. I don't see the value. It's like, <laughs> yeah. so. I don't know. Well, but knows? you know, go, going back to the whole Beats right. thing, yeah, I mean, it was it was weird. But the the other thing that we have to t uh, think about is, I mean, by proxy, as I mentioned in the pre-show, Beats music is on available on Android as well too. And I mean, Apple wants to separate themselves from Android. I mean, they don't want their Beats um, music team working on the Android app. I mean, God forbid. So this would make sense if they were to fold it in and just have it as iTunes Radio and remove it from the Google Play Store and say, oh, too bad, you know. We're now an Apple product, so why would we be on a Google product? I mean, that would make sense, too. Uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll, that's all rumors. We'll find out probably next week what really happens because it always seems to happen that fast. Oh, yeah. All right. iPhone 6. Hey, Tony, don't sit on your iPhone 6 Plus. You know what? I, this is so weird to me. <laughs> this is, is so strange. <laughs> How are these strange? phones bending? Okay, so, okay. so uh, some iPhone 6 Plus owners, and this is the 5.5-inch screen for those of you that don't know by name. Um, some iPhone 6 Plus owners have been the complaining that their phones have been bending. Um, so th there's a quote from this person. Uh, I left yesterday, I left at 10 a.m. with the iPhone in my left front pocket of my suit pants, drove four hours, yada, 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 and came, and, 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 uh, and came, uh, came, back, to, came back around 2 a.m. And I, uh, so it was in my pocket for about 18 hours in total. I looked at it and was slightly bent. And it's so weird that this is happening because I have a Galaxy... Uh, Galaxy Note 3, and it's plastic, and it's been in my front pocket, it's been in my rear pocket, and it's, it's never been. And I don't know. So there was a, a YouTuber who does uh, Unbox Therapy. I forget what his name is. But he took his iPhone 6 Plus that he probably literally just got on Friday, and on camera he saw how much of a give, how much of a bend that the iPhone 6 Plus can handle, and it can handle yeah. quite a bit. I mean, with just enough pressure that you have to place on it, and it seems to be a fairly decent amount of pressure. Um, I don't know how that would happen, especially if it's in your front pocket. You have to be leaning on that for the iPhone to bend like that. So I don't know if Apple is going to do anything for these customers. I mean, it definitely wasn't a cool feature. <laughs> you know, Samsung and LG beat that beat that to the punch, but um, this is this is very strange. So for those of you that are out there possibly looking to get an iPhone 6 Plus, if you weren't banking on getting a flexible phone, you might want to consider putting it in your inside breast pocket or something else because I guess this might happen to you. Um, but with any new product, I mean, there's always going to be, you know, bad apples, so to speak. So uh, this might not be a widespread problem, but it's enough problem that it made the headlines. So we're talking about it. I I, I don't do that. I, well, nothing I can say about that. It's just what it is. I yeah I yeah. All right. Well, I apparently using DuckDuckGo and Google, which by the way, DuckDuckGo is a really cool secure like browser. It was a way that people would yes. use to not use Google and get tracked and different things like that. It was a way that you know I wanted to browse the internet. Anonymously, anonymously not be tracked, be completely clear, and just get my information. Well, DuckDuckGo has now been blocked. Actually, has joined Google being blocked in China. Tony? Yeah, so basically, uh, Sean said everything that the main things that DuckDuckGo is. And it, it, as you know, in China, they're they're very strict on what you can look up. You can't look up, if you're in China, you can't look up Tiananmen Square. 
because uh, it's yeah. not going to come up with anything. It's going to tell you how to get there. It's not going to say anything about you know the tanks or anything. So um, DuckDuckGo, on the other hand, though, uh, if you were to go to that, you can look up pretty much anything you want, and not only that, you're not tracked. So in the latest update to iOS 8, DuckDuckGo was one of the default mm-hmm. search engines that you could use. So if you have an iPhone, as the mm-hmm. iPhone 5S and 5C were sold in China as of last year, uh, those people that up- updated their phones to iOS 8, they could choose DuckDuckGo as a default search engine, thus allowing them to search things without being tracked by the Chinese government. Chinese government's not too Ooh. happy about that, so they blocked the IPs or any 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 uh, and any of the DNS is going to DuckDuckGo, um, and this also kind of. Yeah, and the other thing about this too is the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus are still delayed in China. I mean, we hear 10 million iPhone 6 and 6 Plus have been sold worldwide as of late, and there's a huge uh, fulfillment that there's a lot of delays. People are having to wait months to get their iPhone 6 Plus because Apple preset a huge amount of phones to be sent to China, but they can't be sold yet because they're waiting for China to uh, release the ban and to release the hold on on these phones. And this also has a lot to do with it, because these iPhone 6 and 6 Pluses come with <laughs> iOS 8. So by putting this on there, maybe this, maybe this has something to do with it, maybe not. I'm sure it does. But the fact that now that the Chinese government as a whole has blocked anybody, whether it's on the iPhone or just your browser, to go to DuckDuckGo to use their search engine service, um, this just makes it maybe one step closer to actually releasing the iPhones, but I don't know. It's <laughs> Two thoughts. Yes. I agree with you 100% about why Duck the Dough guy can't, is getting uh, screwed with. China, I'm like, yeah, that, it makes 100% sense. Two, I don't think Apple has greased enough palms to get that phone out in um, China yet because <laughs> I know that's definitely how it works out in the States. Grease a few more palms, pay a few more dollars, help a few more politicians get a couple more houses, a couple more bins, Bentleys, and throw give away a free more a couple more phones. Yeah, I mean we're seeing then that suddenly, with the Xbox oh, One, aren't we? I'm I mean the, X, the sure Xbox that's happening there too. And yeah, I, no, and the I Xbox know, One was supposed to be released right, on on up. Monday or something or today, I forget. And the, you know, China um, had to they uh, Microsoft had a delay their. Um, the release of it because the Chinese government wanted to make sure, hey, what games are going to be applicable to this console? Um, are they going to be corrupting our youth? We're letting you put these consoles in our in our in our the youth of our country, but are they going to be playing games that portray you know uh, Chinese communists as the bad guy? I mean, are you, what kind of you know? So so um, there's a new date on the 29th of September is the new official date of the release of the Xbox One, but that's just another example of China and their their stronghold to American technology. Even though that they are the ones that are building these devices, um, they they still have say on what goes on sale in in their own country. Now, with that being said, there's a crap ton of iPhone 6 Pluses and 6s going to China in the Afrimar- uh, in the black market. So, I mean, a lot of the uh, people that are waiting in line for 10, 18, 19 hours, um, a lot of them are reportedly buying iPhones and then reshipping them um, under the radar to China to make a fairly sizable profit. Because um, if you want to buy one of these phones, they're over a thousand dollars, even just for like the the 32 gigabyte models. So, you know. I mean, it's it's a sought after device. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I just look at it like not enough. To me, this just sounds like I've seen enough movies and watched things and know this just sounds like not enough people are getting paid. I mean, honestly, that's what this holdup sounds like. We just want to make sure that this thing's great. Really, how much more? <laughs> Five fifty thousand, fine. Here, just get my. Can I get my product out now? Honestly, that's what it sounds like to me. I'm not making any claims, but I know if this was America, that's exactly what would really be happening. All right, so, <laughs> Tony, let's take a break here. Let's, um, and then after that, we're going to have a whole bunch of other topics that I'm not going to tell you about because you're going to have to stay tuned to see them. Actually, they're going to be mobile Ooh. topics, some other gaming topics, Ooh, and some digital music interesting stuff, and digital music stuff. So let's take a break. 
Let's take our sponsor, which is this really cool audiobook service called Audible.com. We talk about them weekly because, well, we believe in them and we like the product. We like it because they have perf uh, the best books out there, newest um, newest releases and bestsellers. They have all different types. So no matter what kind of uh, reading you like to do, that reading material is available for you. We're also talking about stuff that you had when you were young and you're when you are growing up as well as things that, well, as you're much older now, maybe, then that you get a chance now. Like, the Hobbit is up in there. I was watching that movie, but you know, it probably been more interesting to watch the book. Um, there's a lot of Jack Ryan books out there. And matter of fact, I even saw another one in Costco the other day. I saw another Jack Ryan, a book with the Ryan, but it turns out Jack Ryan is the president of the United States in this book. And it's his nephew and it's that entire book. And you know what? I looked up it. That, that would also be found on Audible as well as many other releases. So there are audio books, which is essentially the same book with all the full dialogue, all the full um, exp explanation of what's going on, read by a professional using their um, techniques and their professional and what really what they've learned in all the years of professional vocal training that they have learned that, well, pretty much conveys the books in the full glory. And it makes you allow to hear it better than you usually can yourself. It's actually very intriguing and it's a very great way of enjoying these stories. And they are stories. Definitely want to check them out. And with this, UR, this, with this URL that we have on the screen, you get 30 days to check it out for free, and you get a free book as an example. So don't take my word for it. Seriously, sign up, check it out, and when you listen to it and you enjoy it and you get your free book, you're going to be like, wow, this is really good. When you stay a member, you actually get free books every month. You get discounts on other books, and it's an all-around a great book club. This is, yes, audio, audible.com is the book club of audiobooks. So this is the URL we want you to use to sign up is audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E-T-R-I-A-L dot com forward slash L-A-Z-Y. Sign up, enjoy your free book, and most important of all, enjoy a quite a killer audiobook service. All right, Tony, you listen to digital music, right? All the time. All the time, like when you're working out as well as when you're running, going to the show and all that kind of stuff? Oh yeah, I mean, it's, if it's not digital music, it's it's podcasts. Yeah, so. yeah. All right. <laughs> the um. <laughs> I don't. You know what I don't listen to enough though. What is are that? The, are the turtles? No, that. Well, there's a reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, so the turtles. If anyone ever heard of the turtles, they're this group. They had a uh, like a big hit a while back. Um, I don't know if you guys ever heard of it or something. I think it was back, popular back in the '70s or, or late '60s actually. Kind of like this here. You guys might have heard this song here. It has to be called like Happy Together. For me. So happy. Wasn't there, like, <laughs> wasn't there Sesame Street stuff involved with this here? Oh, I'm sure. You know? There's so many different parodies and overlays and you know covers and stuff like that. You're, so, you're not a doo-wop group if you haven't tried to cover it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. You, that's what I'm talking about. So apparently in California, the state that Tony and I happen to reside in at this moment, well, there is a lawsuit going on between two of the members of the Turtles and Sarith, or Sirius, I can never, I know what to say that wrong, I always say that wrong, Sirius, Sirius. XM Radio. So... It turns out, I'm not going to get into the full details because there is a huge amount of dialogue and details here, but what it came down to it is this. Before 1972, there was no uh, copyright protection the way that the way that masters are copy, uh, master recordings are copywritten and protected today. Prior to 1972, they didn't exist. So what a lot of digital radio stations, including Pandora and Sirius XM Radio, have been doing, since there is no protection for copyrights, is that they've been using that material and just playing them and using it as a way to get material for their digital music services. Makes sense. So, you know what? That way, you're starting a new service. You can get to play the Turtles. You get to play all these old 1965 recordings and 1952 recordings and all that, and you don't have to get a license for it. That's essentially what it came down to. And you get well, all the money. Yeah. Well, well, you just don't have to pay for it and you get to use it. Sure, essentially, right. That is what. Yeah. Well. Mm -hmm. well, it looks like, and this was done because of the way the law was written, and now the things have changed. The judge has ruled. Um, <laughs> actually, one sec. Uh, the judge has ruled that, well, <laughs> Sirius Radio is liable and they cannot play pre-1972 music without a license, essentially. This is not just going to affect them. This is also going to affect services like Pandora and countless other music services that have done this for years because this is how they've 
beefed up their library. Now, there's a lot of different things that could um, fall out. There hasn't been an official lawsuit of how much money the people from the Turtles, which the two folks are uh, Flo and Eddie, are the, the couple folk, the two. Flo and Eddie, they, have, they just won the lawsuit showing that they do have to get the copyrights paid to them. Now they can, follow up a, a, they can do a follow-up lawsuit if they want to get damages paid, which apparently they are, according to what's being said, owed damages for all the plays, which in their case is four years of plays in the case for this one, one part situation. Um, now, my question is, now there's going to be a lot of rulings. There's definitely going to be some appeals. This is definitely far from over. But how do you think this is going to affect digital music? Like, this is all the music from before 1972 that apparently a lot, a lot of these services have been you paying a copyright for. Or if the companies have been not smart enough to redo the copyright, I mean, put it to a copyright later on that they've been able to get without paying a license. Well, this is going to end now, and most likely they're going to be paying licenses for a lot of this music because other, comp other people will be following suit. Um, Tony, I mean, just real fast, what do you think your, your opinion on what? Do you, how do you think this is going to affect digital music dis distribution and all that? It's going to be a little rockety for the next couple of years because this basically set precedent. Um, you're going to get a lot of groups, or I guess maybe descendants of the uh, <clears throat> of the artists coming out of the woodworks and saying, "Hey, you know, uh, my." Granddaddy wrote this song. You guys are playing it. It's pre-1972, and you know our family isn't incurring any kind of royalty from it. And because of this, uh, you should, because the guys from the Turtles have uh, been are, are now awarded uh, X amount of dollars for X amount of airplay. Um, we should be allowed this now. Now, Sean, th this is in pertaining to a Sirius XM uh, satellite radio, but does this mean that this covers all radio, like even like yes. KD, K KF KDF KFRC? Yes, ninety nine point seven back in the day. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean this that's is, um, this. Yeah, this yeah, so is not what I what I think. Is, oh. No, I was going to say, say, say real fast, Tony. There's a lower delay here. Um, real fast. It not just covers digital radio. It covers terrestrial radio, which is what Tony's talking about. Stadiums, clubs, and bars. Any public place that plays nineteen pre-1972 royal uh, music but doesn't pay royalties. That's the that was, that's who this affects. So now, Tony, go on. Does that affect people that use it for sampling purposes? Oh well, that's been affected for a long time. Okay. That that has been an issue. This will be more like that old '50s diner that's always been playing Johnny B. Good without yeah. paying royalties, just on a yeah. little jukebox. That's it'll affect them. Now Johnny B. Good and everything on that jukebox would have to be licensed correctly through the company by the jukebox from or whatever. However, that stuff system works. Matter of fact, there's digital jukeboxes now. They come over, they stream online, so most likely they're right. getting the licenses that way. But a little you touch get the, thing. Yes. But you get the idea. This is like it affects anything that played pre-1972 music. Yeah, I mean, you you know the music business way better than I do, and maybe forecast a lot uh, with a lot more certainty. But I I just see this kind of being an ongoing story with uh, popular and not so popular groups. Definitely one-hit wonders. From you know maybe the 1950s, 1960s, um, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know if this would cause the the cost to be passed on to us. So, for example, using jukebox as an example, those those jukebox at the bars that are with the digital jukebox, usually it's like a dollar for one song, two dollars for three songs. Maybe now mm -hmm. it's going to be two dollars for one song. You know, it's going to maybe offset the cost uh, for free streaming radio. Maybe you're not going to get six skips anymore you're only going to get three skips and then you have to hear an ad or something like that so mm -hmm. there's there's definitely going to be a shift in services um, and how we uh, how we consume them and it's going you know I, I don't necessarily think that the overall monthly cost would go up uh, well though it might you know you, you never know I mean yeah. it's funny so you're thinking the monthly cost going up my initial thinking was, how much music are they going to pull off these services? <laughs> oh, that's another good point. Because think about it. Yeah. Like you have to, that's, my, that's my thing. I'm not thinking about how much money they're going to pay because why charge the customer more money when the customer is not prepping to pay more money to get older music? But most of the most, most 
played music they get is probably current music, not old music. The old music fills out the library and gives someone people a chance to go back and remember, like having a, just having a library. What am I saying? Yeah, I mean, the, if you um, if you look at like Amazon streaming music, whatever they call it, Prime Music or something, a lot of those tracks mm-hmm. are old. You know, a, a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Maybe they don't predate 1972, but they're not. I mean, they have some of the top hits, but the overall. Uh, catalog of of what they have is a little bulkier toward you know the earlier era of of, of the you know of our generation. So you know I, I you know and I know that there's been a lot of companies like for example I'm sure Motown is one of those companies who was on top of it to make sure they recopyright all that music that they had from before 1972 to make sure it's covered mm-hmm. but you know there was a lot of like, small labels out there that are all gone they're defunct and this music is just sitting there and I have a feeling this that a lot of that music is what's being affected and I think either music's gonna, a lot of music is going to get pulled. Another service is going to be created that's going to allow these comp- these people to now get relicensing, or all, all these new songs that are now getting to get dropped are going to have to relicense it a different way. It, I have a feeling it's just going to be a mess. So we're going to find out how all this turns out in the next couple months. But either way, it's going to be messy, and yeah, we're going to see what happens. Yeah, interesting. All right, I, I now, uh, real quick. <clears throat> sorry, um, mm-hmm. I do want to. Oh, yeah, please, please go ahead. I do want to uh, answer a question from the the neat uh, Kumar here in the chat room. Um, we haven't yet set how we're going to invite guests. I mean, we do it. We do the show fairly late at night, and uh, we we've had a few requests uh, to to, the, to do guests. And the reason why that we can't just add somebody to the show is because we do have a preset show, and not that you couldn't go along with the topics or anything like that, but it's just. For, for a means of just kind of keeping our ducks in a row. If we're going to have a special guest, we'd like to kind of set that up prior. So, Vanita, if you want, you know, and I'm Sean, I'm sure, you know, if you're open to it, to, to have him come on a, sh- a future show maybe later on in the next couple of weeks or so, you know, contact us. You know, our, our uh, contact information is at the beginning of the show as well as the end of the show. So contact us through our email or Facebook or Twitter, um, we got your email as well too, so maybe we'll we'll hit you up later on tonight just to kind of uh, set things up. But yeah, if, uh, with all due respect, we'll 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 add you to the show um, in a more, I, I guess, not just professional but a more organized manner. That's all. Um, 707-722-5299 or comments at lazytechguys.com. Yeah, thank you. No problem. All right, so tell me a little bit about Alibaba making a whole mess of money, my friend. Okay, so first of all, when I hear Alibaba, uh, I think of Aladdin. Well, <laughs> so, okay, so what is this? Okay, so Alibaba hey, is... Uh, I did get it right. See, you're making it sound like I got it wrong. <laughs> I did get it right, dude. No, you're, you know, you're right. I'm just saying, I mean, when I hear the name okay. Alibaba, I think of Alibaba and the 40 yeah, Thieves. So, and that was the third, uh, third installment of Aladdin where Alibaba was Aladdin's dad. And Poppy and Popeye kicked all their butts. Yes, yes, he did. <laughs> <That old> cartoon. <laughs> Go watch that, that cartoon. Okay, so Alibaba opened up their first, well, first in, uh, the, their uh, IPO here in the United States on Friday, and it opened at like I want to say sixty-eight dollars or something like that, and then later on that night it closed at like ninety-three bucks per share. I mean, this thing is the fastest growing IPO tech stock. And American history, it's it's amazing how quickly this thing grew, and you know tech stocks these days are kind of a shifty uncertainty, uh, but Alibaba has been in business for many years. I mean they're a tried and true product, and it's not just if you don't know Alibaba has been compared to eBay as well as Amazon. Uh, they also outsource to Yahoo uh, through for search, uh, which I guess by default or by proxy is. Um, Microsoft. Um, so yeah, they they are a giant in China, and that's the weird thing because I mean we're 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 having this kind of tech war to a certain degree of privacy and corporate espionage and military espionage between the United States and China, and there's this whole trust issue, and it's interesting. I mean, money talks, right, John? So mm-hmm. it's like okay, you guys, we don't trust you. But at the same time, we want to make some money. So yeah, well, we'll we'll go ahead and open up stock here, and it just furthered the value of the company to like over two hundred billion dollars. It's it's insane 
to, uh, to to see where where Alibaba was, and uh, now it's 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 pretty crazy to um, to have them have to to be the fastest growing tech stock in 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 all history, and it's not even I mean this is the American tech. And it's not even an American company that, that did this. So the it it beat out eBay and it beat out Amazon. And so I'll, yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's not a rags to riches story whatsoever. I mean Google in that regard, Google was a much more um, I'd say not not a heartfelt story, but it was like wow, like startups can really make it in this country because it was an American con uh, company, but. Uh, not to say that the Chinese are invading through stocks, but it's just very interesting <laughs> that this is right. happening. So, do we have a bubble here? A bubble? Do we think we have a bubble in this situation? I'm curious. Because I'm always leery about tech stocks in general, just because it seems like a lot of investors who don't understand technology and who have all the money, essentially are the people who don't understand technology, are just throwing money at what they hear and think is the next biggest thing. Alibaba has had a big name, a big reputation out in China, which of course a lot of these companies have stock in and businesses in, so they and, and the connections in. So to them, Alibaba is a big deal. But out here in the United States, which they did this thing, what does Alibaba really have in the United States? I mean, well, they they are going to be opening up a marketplace here in the United States. They're they're like not Amazon. calling it they're not calling it Alibaba. They're calling it something else. Um, like Amazon. Are, are, then. Yeah, no, it is going to be a com uh, compared to Amazon. Many people are going to compare the two. But I mean, mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, you know the company evaluation and everything. This is this is bigger than Amazon. And and the weird thing is, I mean, as a website, I mean, aside from the fact that it's not in English, uh, mm -hmm. if you do translate to English, it's just the it's not a very good website. It's terrible. <laughs> it's just, see, see, that's, but, but that, that's what gets me about this whole situation. Like, I get why they want to invest in a company with the amount of backing that they have that Alibaba has to possibly put a marketplace in the United States and have a really a cut of the money that they're going to make from it all. But at the same time, and yet they have a, true, a proven track record in another country that has a, vehemently blocked many other competitors from even being in there. So by investing in Alibaba, are you really investing in a strong competitor that because they beat out the competition? Are you investing in, in a, small, a strong competitor because they're well-known and it turns out they're just good friends with the people in the area they're winning? I mean, it's kind of like... I, I always worry about tech stocks, and that's also the reason why I just have issues with stocks because it is essentially gambling with yeah. millions and billions of dollars. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I like I said, I'm leery on it, and that's just because of who I am. I'm always I'm not really gonna be like, yay, Alibaba, great numbers. I'm just gonna be like, there's a lot of people are gonna lose a hell of a lot of money with if they fail at this. Yeah. And I do want to retract my earlier statement. Uh, that's I, I said 200 billion dollars. I meant um, and I meant 25. Billion dollars, but still, that's that's a, that's a that's a lot of money that I will never see in my lifetime. Not yet, at least. Not yet, so, at least. Yeah. <laughs> still waiting for that awesome idea to pop in my head at two in the morning. Dude, I know. Have your phones know when you're not looking at it versus when you're looking at it, and have, dude. What, how about something like that? Google isn't working on that, right? Actually, Sean, they are. Yeah. yeah dude, you're gonna be broke. Sorry, I can't help you anymore. Yeah, I know. So. Um, so there was a patent that went to, I guess, to the patent office that hasn't yet, it's been filed, but it hasn't yet been approved. Uh, but this went on September 4th, and essentially this is uh, titled Detecting the End User, uh, Detecting the End of a User Question. And basically, it um, in the patent, it outlines it as this, quote, the digital capture may be a digital video recorder digital camera, a webcam, etc. The, di uh, the visual capture device may capture visuals and represent the visuals as a stream of images that may form a video. Um, also, if you go to the Spandroid article, um, it, it, it gives a fairly good example where the phone is sitting on the bench or wherever, maybe you're looking at your phone, you say, okay Google, what movies are playing tonight? And the phone knows you're talking to it, and it says uh, Casablanca, Citizen Kane, and Planets of the Apes. Then you turn to your, uh, and then you ask, uh, then you ask, what is the approval rating of Citizen Kane? 
and it says Citizen Kane has an approval rating of 99%. This is something, this interactivity between Google Now, they've talked about this with KitKat, and they've talked about it with the next version of Android L. So we know that part's coming. What's different is that without having to exit out of your Google Now experience, you can just turn away or maybe place the phone down um, and your phone will know that you're no longer talking to it and you can say, so Sean, what do you think about us watching Citizen Kane? And this is where the phone will quote unquote exit active listening mode and you would say something like, you know what, that sounds kind of boring. Can we can we watch Casablanca? And I'll turn <laughs> back to the phone. Hear me say. <laughs> hey man, Casablanca is an awesome movie. Yeah, I know you and I bad. probably wouldn't watch it together, but I'm just saying. Dude, I'm going back to, I agree. Going back to the example movie. though. Going back to the example <laughs> though, I would turn back to my phone and without even saying, "Okay, Google," I'd just turn back to my phone and say, um, "What's the approval rating of Casablanca?" And then I'll say something like, um, "The approval rating of Casablanca is uh, 88%." So. That, that is something, being able to communicate with your phone, um, they're now doing that with infrared sensors that you can just kind of wave over like the Moto X and it shuts off a phone, but it's, the, it's infrared sensors that it doesn't, it senses gestures, but it doesn't sense like your face. So this wouldn't necessarily be like lip reading at all, uh, but it would know that you were talking to it specifically, and otherwise... It would, it would, in a sense, shut itself off so it wouldn't hear uh, conversations that you were not directing to it. And the question would, is, is it going to shut off? Yeah, I don't know about that, bro. You know, I mean, aside from the whole question of, uh, you know, the fact that it's always listening and stuff like that, um, and it's always watching, that's going to drain your battery and stuff like that. Well, you know, your phone is always listening. I can say to my phone right now, you know, okay, Google, and it does the Google Now uh, does Google Now thing without me having to do anything. That's always listening, and the battery drains very small. It's minuscule, um, but it's more about privacy. You know, the, the fact that the microphone is on all the time, the, and with this patent, the idea is that your webcam, whether it be on your phone or your computer or your tablet, your webcam or, or some other kind of ocular device, uh, optical device is going to, in a sense, always have to be on to know that you're talking to it directly versus talking to your best friend next to you or whatever, uh, going over between Casablanca and Citizen Kane. Uh, how many people in the everyday world are going to be okay with that? I mean, we see it as a cool idea, but we're getting closer and closer to the. there's so much privacy issue surrounding it, but are people going to be able to give up that privacy for the cool idea. I mean, we're seeing leaks and stuff like that of, you know, naked pictures and things like that, which, you know, invasion of privacy. So there's definite awareness of it. But, you know, after a week of, you know, the, the nude pictures, and there was actually another, uh, there was another wave of nude pictures that came out a couple of days ago, you know, the, the, the everyday person's not talking about it. They're kind of like, oh, well, we're screwed either way. What else you got? What other cool technology the technologies coming our way? Because we're we're living in this era, so we might as well deal with it. But I don't know. So you think they're gonna have major privacy issues? I think it, there's going to be initial privacy issues because people had mm -hmm. privacy issues with uh, Google Google Glass, and what the fact that that's on somebody's head all the time. Mm -hmm. You have your phone with you all the time. You know, I mean, if your phone's in your pocket, that's that's one thing. But you know, can you imagine walking by somebody and you just have your phone, and just kind of looking at it? Maybe maybe you're just holding your phone, you're just not really doing anything with it. And someone says, "Hey, shut your phone off. You're taking pictures of me." Like, no, I'm not. No, your phone has uh, has always watching on because you're you have an Android phone. I don't want I don't want Android seeing that I'm walking by. Like, that seems a little far fetched, but it's something that could totally happen mm -hmm. because of Google's prior uh, uh, experience in this kind of world of cameras on on, on wearables and, and things of that nature. So, mm -hmm. No, I agree with you. Yeah. The only thing I was thinking of, this is a missed opportunity. You know that Android robot I keep telling you that Google needs to make and keeps trying to make? This yes. technology should be, look, the interaction that... Here, Sean, here's your tinfoil hat. This is what I was making earlier. Oh, here's your tinfoil hat. Hey, hey, no, I'll I'm wear it for you. All right. I, I don't know how to – my wife does the origami. I don't know how to make hats. 
No, so here's the deal. You need a bigger piece of foil. I'm the, okay. uh, <laughs> that, that cooking foil stuff is great for cooking, but not for making hats out of well, it. Well, I'm not going to put this to waste. I'll, I'll cook some, like, uh, hash browns on it tomorrow or something. There you go. Good choice, too. Um, so the what I was thinking about this is this will be better on an Android. Like, the biggest thing about the technology would be it will be able to discern – if like it'll be able to be pretty essentially be a person in the conversation who's being quiet and only answers questions when you want to have a question for it, but they're always listening to all the words. They always know who's involved. They know everybody's in the conversation. They know everybody in the room. They just know when to speak when spoken to. Essentially, yeah. what this this will be a virtual butler. This will be a great thing for it to do because it'll be that one time you're like, oh, you know, what? hey, geez, where's this thing? And it will answer you. Great. And then you immediately leave the conversation and go somewhere else, and it knows, oh, you're done with me, and it'll just stop listening. Anyway, on a phone, yeah, I agree with you 100%. This is going to be hell. As I mean, to, as... a cer- to a certain degree, the Xbox One Connect does this because when you walk into the room and your TV's on, your Connect will say, hi, Sean. Like, you haven't done anything. You're like, oh, hi, how you doing? Like, it recognizes you. And then, you know, if Rad were to walk into the room and he has his profile uploaded to your, your account for whatever reason, like, oh, hi, Rad. He's like, oh, it knows Rad's here, too. Just, just because of the facial recognition. So that's facial recognition. Now with this technology, I mean, we could go as far as it's seeing you, it's listening to you, even if you're just watching the Niner game, mm-hmm. it's listening to what you're saying. And if you were to say something like, man, you know what, I really could kill for some uh, KFC after this, you know, then it'll show you a KFC ad. I mean, that's, that's the other fear because this, this implementation of technology isn't just for necessary nefarious purposes. They're not going to necessarily um, give the NSA a back door to listen to you at any of all times. They want to sell you ads. They want to sell you stuff. So they want to hear the things that you're talking about. And if you were just to mention um, a Moto 360 or if you were to mention n- nothing tech-related, just like Apple's like, oh, you know what? With Google Shopping Express, we can have someone ship apples to you right to your door in less than 30 minutes. It's like, oh, I wasn't thinking about that seriously, but now that you mention it, sure, why not? I mean, yeah. that's 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 the that's the direction that I can see that going in. Yeah, well, every, yeah, the bigger fear behind this the difference between this and Connect is the phone is always with you, and the Connect is a right. Yeah, in the room. that's what makes things like Connect okay. Things like this is different because you can walk down the street and do it. That's what makes this different. Anyway, all right. Hold on. I just want to do something. Um, Xbox on. I just want to see how many Xboxes I turned on. Okay. Ha <laughs> ha, you jerk. Yes. Google Nexus 9 is happening. Made by who? HTC. Who are they? I'm kidding. What we got going on, man? So, yeah, uh, HTC hasn't made a tablet since I think it's 2011 with their HTC Flyer, which was a 7-inch tablet. I want to say it was running, like, uh, gingerbread, uh, running Sense 5.0, maybe maybe not even 5.0. I don't remember, but it was a crappy tablet. I mean, with all due respect, it was like $700 on a contract. It was a lot Mm -hmm. to ask for, and this this was... Prior, it was it's it's uh, it's gingerbread. So it was prior to Honeycomb, which was the operating system to really to really kind of culminate the whole tablet interface. But it didn't really catch on. And um, as a company, HTC hasn't made any Nexus devices for Google. They made the Nexus One, and then that was that was pretty pretty much it. So um, Google's sticking to their promise of going to other. Manufacturers, not just doing with Motorola, not just sticking with uh, ASUS and L- uh, LG. Well, Samsung did two, but mm-hmm. they've done LG for the past two uh, phones at least. And it, it looks at HTC. We've seen this since July that HTC is in fact doing a nine-inch tablet, and I think it was like codenamed Valaris, a Vitaris, something like that. And it's been cur- confirmed by sources for the Wall Street Journal that this is coming out um, in the next couple of months. Now, HTC has a press uh, announcement that actually we were invited to. And uh, yeah, it's it's. Um, I, I got this last uh, Monday. And on October 8th, there's an event in New York City, again, mm-hmm. what, which is why we can't go. Uh, but we've been invited to an event on October 8th in New York City. This might not have anything to do with the Nexus 9. It uh, might have to do with their rumored smart watch that they pulled from IFA and that they're going to be re-announcing at that, that, at that event. I don't think it's going to be a hardware event. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, this is, you know, since the flyer, 
HTC has done a huge turnaround, not so much in marketing, but more in their hardware and design. And you know, if you look at the HTC One M7 and the HTC One M8, those are some of the best Android phones. And the M8 with Windows. I mean, those are some of the best phones hardware-wise, bar none. I mean, people have complaints with the camera, and those are valid complaints because they're not as good as HTC kind of promised them to be. But, you know, if you want a nice, really nicely done interface uh, with HTC's overlay called Sense, uh, it's it, they've, they've done a really bang-up job. I'm very, very impressed how far HTC's come along. And it's unfortunate that they kind of blundered their own name with the, the, with all the different HTCs that came out prior to 2000, uh, I guess 2013, because 2013 is when the HTC One uh, M7 came out, but before then it was the One X, the One X Plus, and the One S. I was like, oh, geez, just you don't even know what you want to do. Like you're just all over the map with all these kind of mid to high end phones. Like, yeah, we mm-hmm. just we just have so much that we want to give you guys. Like, no, just fix, just just focus, focus, and they did. So yeah, the the other thing that is really uh, that that's been rumored that this tablet is going to be promoting and supporting is the new Tegra One, uh, Tegra K One 64-bit processor. This will be, and I say will be with quotes because it's still rumored, but this will be the first Android tablet to don um, a 64-bit operating system that Google is backing. I mean, there's other 64-bit Android devices out there, but it's not, I mean, it's not really backed by Google right now. This is going to be the first one. So it's it's exciting because the uh, NVIDIA Shield tablet, which was released earlier this year, year, has the K1. And if you play games on there, whether you're using Twitch or playing games like Portal 2 and Half-Life 2, they're pretty good. I mean, they're not the greatest of games. You know, they're, they're a little bit on the older side. But for an actual like desktop game on a mobile device, they're, they're they run really really nicely. And I'm not sure if it's all owed to the K1 processor, but the K1 processor definitely has something to do with it. So, yeah, I'm excited to see when this actually get announces uh, gets gets announced. How much it's going to be? Because that's the other thing. Nexus devices tend to be on the uh, more affordable price, if you will. Um, so yeah. We'll find out, awesome. and we'll be there in spirit when they find out. <laughs> How, um, are you excited for that uh, new BlackBerry Passport? The what now? Who's BlackBerry? BlackBerry Passport. What's that? Is little that a square. is that a fruit? No, it's a little is square. A, it's a phone. It's a square. I think. It's a square fruit. It's a phone. Oh God! So BlackBerry is not dead. <laughs> in fact, I mean, the last the last quarterly earnings, BlackBerry came up with a profit. So good for them, and, and truth be told, a lot of it was due to you know enterprise, uh, and, and also BlackBerry released their apps on iOS and, and Android too. So for those of you yeah. that want to use uh, their BBM things like that, you can, and that obviously helped. But as a smartphone manufacturer, they kind of took a step back, and they have a new CEO, John Chen, and this is his baby. I mean, this is his mm-hmm. first Aww. hardware. That, that he really, you know, kind of like how Tim Cook, his first hardware was the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, so he was really excited about that. John Chen's really excited about this too. So if you haven't seen, as Sean mentioned, this is a square phone. And when I say square, I don't mean like it's kind of kind of square. No, this is freaking square. No, the screen right. itself... Still, oh, the screen is a the square. The screen yeah. itself is square. It's an... It's it, it's the... The, the, the resolution... The, the, What's it called? The dimensions of the screen is an exact square. The actual the whole phone is a little bit rectangular because it has actual hardware keys, which you BlackBerry lovers are going to really enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you know what? If if you're watching live and you haven't yet seen this, let me just show you a screenshot. That that is the BlackBerry Passport, and it's going on sale without subsidy for six hundred. Dollars. Um, in terms of the actual specifications of the hardware, I don't, I don't know if this article dons the the specifications. It it doesn't. But this uh, BlackBerry is having their big release tomorrow with it. But it's only going to be in certain markets. I know Dubai is one of them. London's one of them. Obviously, Canada is one of them as well too. They, they, Toronto, Canada. But yeah, this is not going worldwide um, as like an iPhone or something, a Galaxy or or as um, you know, Nokia device, but
but this is, you know, BlackBerry's last stand. I mean, if this flops, what what does that say to BlackBerry? I mean, is that going to tell them, okay, we we don't we can't do hard we 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 can do the Microsoft thing and go all in with software and have our software on all the different platforms, and we'll we'll do back. Backbone stuff, car, Apple, uh, Apple CarPlay is based off of QNX. So we'll do all that because there's a lot of money to be made in software. But in hardware, for whatever reason, we just can't wrap our heads around it. Do you think, Sean, that that will, come to, that will be a conclusion that they will be able to come to? Or are they still in this bubble that because BlackBerry is still a big force in Canada, that it's going to be a big force everywhere else? I have no idea. I am completely clueless on what's about to happen with them. I I I could see them making one bull one bullheaded move or making another bullheaded move, and either way, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of winning situations here. It's like they got to give up phones or keep making phones that are probably possibly not going to sell, appease a market that's not very big, or abandon them and let less people use your product. It's kind of in a bad situation all around. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I just think maybe they just need to get a new design team, like hire a complete new, fresh design team, and try it out again while focusing on all your enterprise and your strengths in that realm, and just see. Because no company can continue to do the same thing for a long period of time and expect to be relevant. They got to keep moving forward and keep adjusting and keep migrating to the industry and to the world. So they have to move forward in some way. I don't know if mobile phones are it. Maybe they need to make hardware for enterprise. Maybe they should. I don't know. I, Blackberry I think, servers, well, servers, thinking, do that. Well, I was thinking more of the world of like you have things like um, do switches. the IBM thing. You have to, yeah, like switches and different kind of network switches and way crazy stuff like that. Maybe they could get in that hardware. Maybe they have better expertise in that. I don't know. It, I mean, I like, like last last week, uh, Tim Cook said uh, with iOS eight, all of our stuff is encrypted. So even if like the FBI or CIA get a hold of your phone, they can't get into your stuff because of the encryption that is in, that is baked into iOS 8. And then Google said, oh yeah, we've also been working on that for a couple of years with Android L. And BlackBerry basically has been saying, we've been doing that forever. That's the whole purpose of BlackBerry security with enterprise. I mean, that is our bread and butter. So they really need to like go with that. Like say, hey, hey, you know, we we ha you worried about security? We've got it. We've we've had it. We set the bar with security. We might not have the best phones, but here are apps that you can use to facilitate that security. We will have end to end protection and and and, and all of that. And that's in in my opinion, that's what they need to do because then, because of that end to end uh, uh, security, they can say, oh, okay, so. These are all the people in your company that want to use BBM because it's more secure than Snapchat and, and Google Hangouts and things like that. Um, but for you to be able to do that, uh, you can have us host it, which will we'll charge you, or you can get your own server and it will cost you this much, and you will do you will do the hosting. Uh, but in the long run, it's going to be a lot cheaper. So why don't you just buy the server and we'll we'll do maintenance and things like that. But I mean, that's what BlackBerry should be really focusing on. There's there's no there's no uh, harm, in my opinion, there's no harm in BlackBerry saying we're, we're we we didn't start in the consumer market and we're not going to end the consumer market. We had a few good runs with the with the curve and the bolds and the in the pearls, but that was it. We for whatever reason we couldn't keep with the change and on the hardware side of it, but we still kick ass and, and these other things and we're going to continue doing that. I mean, can you imagine if, if, if Microsoft, for example, I mean, they have the Surface now, but some of the things that they had in the uh, uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s, if they just really kept on pushing that, like, that would be insane. I mean, you got to go with the flow. You got to go where your where your your strengths are. But at the same time, when you are a company as large as they are, you don't go with the strength. You actually try to create new pathways and new strength. You try to build on new things. Now, I say maybe they do need to kind of do what you're doing or maybe go in a different direction. But the thing in the grand scheme of things, I have no idea if 
I don't know what to do. I am, if I was Blackberry, I could not tell him. If that was the CEO, of course, I'd be making decisions and looking at all the numbers and making a decision with that. But even then, it sounds like they're just going to have to take some losses just to get themselves even more stable and then rebuild again in a different way to make their company stronger, wherever it happens to be, whether it be consumer or, cons or enterprise or in race cars. I don't know. Anyways, so Ooh, race cars. I'm telling you, Blackberry tires. All right, so the um, all right, next one here. Okay, PlayStation TV. So this is a actually this thing is happening and it's coming out. Is it this week here? Is what you're saying, Tony? Or oh, October 14th, which is next month. Yeah. So in three weeks, PlayStation TV will arrive. And what PlayStation TV is is a hundred dollar gaming console. Not too bad of a deal. So that's it, great. Yeah. So essentially what it is, it is a PlayStation Vita without the screen, and it turns your TV, and it allows you to play any PlayStation Vita game that doesn't use a touchscreen, any PSP title, or any PlayStation 1 title that you may have bought digitally over the years. Well, now, Sony says that nearly 700 games would be supported at launch, so yeah. there might be some games that aren't. Yeah, there are a lot of games that are not. <laughs> it's like, just if you, okay, there are lists online. If you are really considering buying one of these, you got three weeks to do so. And by the way, it's a hundred dollars, so it's kind of hard not to consider buying one of these. <laughs> but um, well, yeah, and let, yeah, let's yeah. be clear that there's there's two variants. There's the hundred dollar one just for the console, and then there's a hundred forty dollar one where you get the console, uh, you get a uh, DualShock Three controller an 8 gig memory card, a USB cable, an HDMI cable, and the Lego movie game. So for Which 40 is, bucks more, I think that's a great deal because yeah, a DualShock 3 controller by itself is like 54 bucks. The, so the, the memory card and the memory card's uh, 25 bucks too by itself. That yeah, the deal you definitely the one forty is memory card is twenty five bucks. It's they're silver price, dude. That's why the Vita is having so many problems. The memory cards are too expensive. Is it? They're it's not using Sony Pro Stick Duos. What are they using? Their own proprietary. It's Sony. Ser yeah. See, don't be surprised. It is exactly what they always do. And that's anyway. So yeah. So you got but that. Yes. So I mean, yeah. You you probably want to go for the the one forty because that that just makes makes it a great deal. Well, there's actually a little bit more. So I guess the bigger deal behind this is the fact that Sony's been doing that PlayStation Now stuff, which is essentially streaming games Guy to the console. Yeah, the Gaikai technology. Mm -hmm. So PlayStation Now will be compatible with this PlayStation TV. So yeah. when they launch that, this $102 or $140 purchase, however you want to look at it, <laughs> Now we'll play a lot of the games that were available, or you could rent games. Like you could literally have this your portable rental console. You're a business member, your business thing. You can literally throw this in your bag with your controller. When you get to the hotel room and you're ready to take the night off because you're not at home, you could throw this in there and rent the latest Uncharted game and play it for a night, and then done, you're finished off. I mean, it actually has a lot of cool things about it, and it's so cheap and it's small. It's actually. Yeah. Smaller than this passport that I'm holding in my hand, <laughs> it's it's a great deal all around. And it's a really cool product. I just I mean I don't know how many games are going to be out for it, but it's a hundred dollars or hundred forty. So, well, also if you have a PlayStation Four in the household, oh, yeah, you right. would be able to stream remote stream PlayStation Four games mm -hmm. onto this. So I mean, right. you know, if you d do have that set up, you have you know the the PS4 in the den, and then you have your kid who has a TV up upstairs for whatever reason. Um, they, you know, this would be a great Christmas present or whatever holiday you prefer to, you know, ce celebrate, and you know, give them the ability to stream. I don't know whatever PS4 game that that uh, that they want while you are playing or you know, using Watch the PS4 it. downstairs. Yeah, so you could do two things simultaneously. Yeah, I think it's well, great. No. I think it's a great idea. Not quite. Not quite. You can. If your person downstairs is sorry, if the the main TV is using the PS4, the other TV cannot use the PS4. Oh, you can't. Oh, okay. No, well, still, you, even even if that's games. the case, they got you don't have to lug the PS4 upstairs. Exactly. Now, yeah. if you let's say Tony, you have the PS4 downstairs, and your son wants to play a game, but you want to watch the latest Game of Thrones, you turn on HBO, you watch Game of Thrones, he can play PS4 upstairs. Okay, so I can still use the console, the PS4 console. I just can't play a game. No, no, no. You just you while you the while so one person can use the console. Let's say if you just turn on HBO and you start watching TV, you're not eating up the TV that they want to play video games at. Oh, right, right, remember, right, right. Remember how when we were young kids and you want to play the Nintendo, but your mom says I want to use a TV and it was the only TV and you're screwed. Now you can't play video games. Right. It eliminates that. Now they can right, go upstairs right. and play right, a video yeah. games. And as you mentioned, they don't have to unplug the whole thing and drag it with them. 
Yeah. <laughs> now this gives Sony the ability to sell cheap TVs too. It's like, oh, you're buying this? You might as well buy your $300 20-inch TV that has HDMI ports and uh, front-facing speakers. Dude, and Sony, if they were smart, would sell this as an accessory. Just This is an add-on to every TV sale that has HDMI. Yeah. Every person who is under the age of 18, they should pitch it. No, no, no. Get this $130 bundle. There you go. Oh, they have a PS3 already. For this $100, you're up and running. Yeah. It's it's a good deal. So. No, it's great. I, well, I'm curious on how it's going to run. We'll find out in well, a couple of weeks, and hopefully I'll have $100 to buy one, and I'll let you know. Or $140, really, because I can use the extra controller. Plus tax. Hey, whatever. Um, <laughs> this is California. We always pay tax. If I wanted to buy an organ, then I wouldn't pay tax. Anyway, Blizzard, you heard of them, right? Uh, yes, I think they, so. They, they make um, donkeys. Right? Uh, no, World of Warcraft. That's the game. Oh, you might have heard that. of it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's popular. <laughs> it's really popular. It is? Yeah, it is. How, so, how popular? <laughs> it's, it's been around forever, and people are still getting addicted to it. Anyway, Blizzard has, so Blizzard has been rumored to be working on a game called Titan. It is an MMO, next generation, that they announced supposedly seven years ago, or has been talked about seven years ago. Well, even though the game has not officially been announced, apparently the game has officially been canceled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, there's not much really to say here except for um, people announce games all the time and then this one here, because Blizzard is the people who made War of Warcraft, they are under a mic microscope or you know telescope as I said before show and um, they're being looked at very, very diligent. Actually, you know what? A telescope would work if it's like they're firing it down at the, get the offices, you know? And everybody around the world... Anyway. Just, just go with microscope, man. Yeah, just... fine. Anyway, people have been looking at them. They've been pretty detailed, kind of staying on top of them, and they heard a rumor of this game, or maybe they did mention its code name this, or it was rumored through some leaked press release, but now it's officially dead, and there will be no Titans coming, or no Titan coming from Blizzard. Now, does that... I mean, okay. Bye-bye, Titan. But, I mean, Blizzard's not going to just rest on their laurels with new raids and new add-on packs to WoW and StarCraft, right? I mean, they're, I'm I sure they're going to do something else maybe in another seven, seven years. Well, I would hope that they probably have Titan. They also have, they hopefully have Project Spoon, which is like a tick remake. Project um, Audio, <laughs> Project, like five or six of the projects that were, they were working on. And maybe one of the other projects panned out. And then when they got it together, like, you know what? The Titan one that they talked about isn't that good. But Project Spoon, the remake of the tick show, I'm telling you, this is going be huge. Yeah, um, I mean, he, he makes a good point. I mean, when you're building games, it, I mean, this is what this is why Notch built Minecraft in the first place. He did it for fun. So, mm -hmm. you know, he he said we didn't find the fun with Titan. We didn't find the passion. We talked about how we put it through a reevaluation period, and actually, what we reevaluated is whether that was just that was the game we really wanted to be making, and the answer was profoundly no. And that makes sense, because if they were to go through with it, even after seven years of doing the project, not doing the doing, if they were to finally push it out and it sucked, I mean, how much of a headline would that be for Blizzard? And we're talking Blizzard here. What it think comes out with a below uh, quality game, and it's like what? And if it's nothing different than World of Warcraft, it's just just a different kind of uh, you know, you know, uh, story base and things like that, it's like. What was all of that uh, R and D for? For nothing, you know. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I said yeah. I hope that they have more projects. And, yeah, no, I mean, I, they they have to have more projects. They should also bring back BlizzCon, but uh, that's a <laughs> story. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. All right. Now, I just want to see the cosplay. That's all. I don't know anything about the game. I just think the cosplay is awesome. The orcs walking around with giant hammers for no freaking reason. It's like, hey, he's getting a donut. Cool. I'll follow him. Watch the orc eating a donut. Yeah. Title of the show. Oculus Rift. Purchased Oculus by Facebook. Rift. Have they are they have now released their third prototype of the Oculus Rift called Crescent Bay. The first one was called I think the Oculus Rift. The second one was called uh, Crystal Cove, and now this one is called Crescent Bay. Which I guess they're doing some kind of beach thing going on here or something like that. Oh, the beach themed, yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Apple's already got this beach thing going on. They're not both going to fight for the next bay, are they? What what beach thing is Apple? Oh, not Mavericks. No. I... 
No, I mean, their next thing is Yosemite. I mean, it, it's oh, right. those just are like landmarks, landmarks, landmarks in general. That okay, got it. to California, yeah. Got it. Just landmarks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if you hate California? Does that mean you're going to hate Apple's titles of? Anyway, I'm just kidding. All right. So the Oculus Rift, they announced their new prototype, and this new prototype. Apparently, at least at least for this one writer who's from PC Gamer has said, and this is a guy who's apparently used the other Oculus Rift, is significantly better than the rest. It actually has something called presence, which makes you feel like you are really there. Yeah, like it has a. There. <laughs> it has 360 uh, head tracking motion. Good. So if you look at the pictures, there are little white dots on the front of the visor. There's also white dots on the back that go behind your head. So uh -huh. if you were to turn around, it would be able to – the because there is a camera. There's an additional camera that you set on your desk or something supposedly. And if you turn around, you'll be able to immerse yourself in that full 3D virtual reality experience. Plus, because of this head tracking capability, the latency and the issue with people having motion sickness – it's possible to be drastically reduced because before it was it was I guess because there was lack of head tracking or proper head tracking that's that's where people were like whoa and so now it's going to be obviously a lot better. Um, also, they've implemented headphones. Before you had to kind of hmm. put your own kind of headphones in from your Walkman. Yeah, why well, said Walkman? Uh, your own headphones, whatever you preferred. Now they have. Their own headphones kind of built in. They're not the greatest headphones. In fact, if you look at them, they kind of look like the free headphones that you get on a get on an airplane. But they're headphones, you know. I mean, it's it's their it's their next step, and uh, they are working with uh, 3D audio companies. So when you're watching, I think one of the movies that you can watch is like a Beck concert. You can actually look around in the audience, and as you look. The music would actually like transfer from one ear to the other, just like it would in a real concert, instead of just hearing it in hmm. stereo. And so, I mean that. I mean, this is all very, very cool stuff. However, <laughs> Crescent Bay is not available to buy. Crescent Bay is a prototype that they showed off, but you can't go to OculusRift.com and buy it. The only one you can buy is DK2, or as you, as you mentioned, Crystal Cove, and. Uh, so this is this is kind of an I, I would say it's an internal prototype that they're also handing off to select developers that are developing games for uh, for the Oculus Rift. So, um, um, I got but it, it, it's getting there, man. I mean, so we the, they they promise a release date to consumers in 2015. So the fact that they're, uh, they're making this headway, I mean, the 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 DK2 was earlier this summer, and now they're doing essentially. DK 2.5. I mean, that's that's awesome that they're so they're going so fast. They said they promised the a consumer version or a version of this one that can be purchased for devs in 2015. A consumer version. Interesting. Yeah, and I I want to retract my uh, other statement. Or no, yeah, no, DK 2 was 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 available earlier this summer. Anyways, so, yeah. essentially yeah. what they did was. Looked at everything Project Morpheus did and added it to their Oculus Rift. <laughs> I mean, I guess. I mean, we don't we don't know anything no, else no, from no, Project no, Morpheus, no, though. No, no, every, no. I do know certain things about Project Morpheus, and everything you stated is exactly right. So Project Morpheus had several features on top on that on top of on the Oculus Rift, which made it slightly better and what made okay. people like it better. One, if you look at the picture of the Project Morpheus, there's lights on the back of it and all around on the side. Those are for tracking. Just like the dots are designed on this thing for tracking. Yeah. Two, they have a camera. The Sony one has been. They have that. Um. What is that thing called again? The eye camera thing that they sell separately. Eye toy. Yes. Yeah, not. No. Not eye toy. It's not. It's something. It's a different name. Okay. Um, yeah, the iToy was used the to be. version. It was eye toy, then something eye, then something whatever the current one's called. They all have the same similar name though, but you need that camera, and that does the tracking to the the lights. Mm -hmm. The third thing, the Sony one had headphones built in with 3D audio technology. It okay. actually allowed you to put just a regular set of headphones, whether it be these or small ones or whatever. You plugged it into a little eighth inch jack, and it will allow you to get the three dimensional thing, and it felt like you're in the space. Everything that you just spoke about literally was everything that made the Morpheus stand out from the Oculus Rift. And now it looks like all those things have now all been covered and they are now on perfect equal playing ground, except for one has a lot of open PC development and one is still closed behind the door of Sony. 
Yeah, I mean, you're tethered, literally tethered to your PC, essentially. It's not wireless. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know if Morpheus is or not, but you're tethered. Uh, to, you are you're also tethered. tethered. Uh, the second thing uh, that Oculus doesn't have is like native controls. So uh, with Project Morpheus, they're integrating uh, PlayStation Move controls that have the tracking lights as well, and so you can you know use it as a sword or as a shield or things like that. Um, so, but, re but remember, Oculus Facebook recently bought the controller company who was making the 360 controller. Right. Remember yeah, that? and yeah. they were also uh, 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 not, is a carbon. I forgot who it was. Well, they they, they also they also had something to do with the design of this latest version of the Oculus. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, an actual you know um, controller that is built for for this. Uh, plus, uh, Leap Motion uh, integrated their SDK with Oculus Rift, and you wear these special motion uh, gloves mm -hmm. that is, in a sense, very. You know, uh, Minority Report again, another reference where you can actually like see your hands moving and doing stuff in the Oculus Rift visor. Because like that, you know, when when you're using the controller and everything, it's you can still look around and everything. But in terms of being immersed in a real 3D environment, in a real 3D environment, you don't have your your hands twiddling your thumbs and stuff. Like you're doing stuff. So with this, the 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 implementation of Leap Wireless and all this other like 3D motion tracking, I mean the the, the, there's a lot of stuff that they would be able to do, but they're just there's just so much. It's just, but it's amazing, like how far they've come just in this short amount of time frame. Yeah, this is that. Hey, I didn't know about the gloves. Hey, you know what? the gloves I have been talking about for a long time. I keep talking about um, Ready Player One. Yeah. Tact, and I kept saying they had the, essentially an Oculus Rift like style visor with headset so they can hear everything and they had tactile gloves that allowed them to interact with the environment in the way that we would normally interact and they were tactile so they could feel things in that world mm -hmm. but I mean that's some futuristic book that you know doesn't exist yeah. but, I mean to, to compare it to one of my favorite recent animes um, is uh, Sword Art Online mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit of futuristic but basically people put these VR headsets on and it's a, an immersive MMO but they're in a sense transported to this completely different uh, digital world, and they're just laying in their bed, and they're not moving. And so it's the lazy man's perfect gaming experience. But in the game, you're doing all this stuff. You can look like a honk if even if you're a scrawny guy, things like that. Uh, but the disadvantage was if someone like took a headset off of you while you're playing the game, um, you could die. <laughs> <laughs> so so that was one of the things and part of the plot. That was one of the awesome. things part of the plot. It's like, okay, well, we got to save this girl, but we can't just take the head for the thing off because she's going to die. So you have to save her in the game, and in the game, you uh, the, the main character had to you know, help her exit the game. Otherwise, she, you know, she's a hot main character, so you want the hot main character to, to live. So. That's hilarious. I'm sorry. That That's a great premise. That's great. Yeah. This reminds me of some Matrix thing where if you don't disconnect from the Matrix... Yeah, you're, you're like literally forever. plugged in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. Anyway, yeah. Hey, well, hey, this made the thanks. This made the Oculus really great. I'm like, great now, VR, dude. It looks like this VR thing is really gonna happen. In about two years, we might be really be real rolling with this and seeing some great games and it's not even games, experiences across the board. Just standing in there and getting the experience of being in a crowd doing something or maybe therapeutical. They'll do like therapy. You're scared of heights. Well, we'll put you on a VR where you're in height now and yeah. we'll just get that experience. I mean, there's a lot that we can, that can be done with this. And, and in about a year's time, it looks like we finally will have this opportunity. It's going to be big. It's cool. Yeah. All right. Anyway, let's go ahead and cut the show off. We've been going on for long enough. Thank you for everyone for hanging out with us. Tony, if the people would like to reach you, call you, contact you, or just say, what's up, how would they do so? Uh, best way probably would be on Google+. Plus. Just find me, Tony Hannity's, um, or if you want to tweet, you can uh, hit me up at LTG Tony. Excellent. Um, I'm Sean Wilburn. You can find me here as, uh, as Sean Wilburn. It's S-E-A-N. Also, if you know, for a personal plug, please check out my album. I have music out there in the world. Hopefully you really like it out there. It's international music. And I um, hope you check it out. It's under my name, Sean, S-E-A-N-W-I-L-B-U-R-N. Now, we have a group line and group contact to reach us all, and this is how you do so. Comment at lazytechguys.com is the email. 707-722-5299 is the telephone number. You can email us at comment. I'm oh, sorry. You can find us on social networks, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. If you look up Lazy Tech Guys, 
Lazy Tech Guys. Excuse me. Our YouTube channel is Lazy Tech TV. That's where this uh, live broadcast is going, as well as many, many other places and many other videos that we keep updated there pretty often. So please follow us, like us, check us out, et cetera, et cetera, on all of those fine, fine networks. And with that, we are going to go enjoy this beautiful week. And I want you guys to do the same. Come back next week at 10, uh, uh, well, 10 o'clock, no, 11 o'clock Tuesday, Pacific Standard Time, and join us again for episode 207. Thank you again. We are out. Peace.